Today I want to look at an example of finding a volume created by revolving a region in two-dimensional space about an axis using integration. So let's say um, we find the volume generated in revolving the region enclosed by y equals square root of x, y equals 0, and x equals 4, revolving that about the x-axis. So let's draw that region to get a sense of what's going on. And so we've got our square root function. And we're only going here to x equal 4 and y equals 0. So that's our region. We're going to revolve that around the x-axis. So I'll draw a mirror image of that below the x-axis. So we're talking about something like that. Now in our formula, we saw that it really came down to if you could express the cross-sectional area at a given location, just integrate those cross-sections and you would have the volume. So this is just some arbitrary x value. Because these regions are created by revolving, their cross sections perpendicular to that axis are always circles, right? So I'm just going to draw that circle, not the full cylinder that we saw in the development. Think of this as what happens to the cylinder as your delta x's collapse. They become these 2D circles. So what is that cross sectional area? Well, it's a circle, so it's pi r squared. And the radius here is being determined by the function. This function is y equals square root of x, so the y here is square root of x. So we have pi square root of x squared, and that squaring would just get rid of our square root, so at any given x location then, the cross-sectional area is just pi times x. So all we have to do now is integrate, which is adding up all those areas of all those slices to get the entire volume. So our volume is the integral. Now when you're trying to think about limits of integration, think about what you chopped. This region, if you were slicing it, you'd be slicing all the way from x equals 0 to x equals 4. So that's slicing, what did you partition? Remember an integral at its base is a Riemann sum. And that Riemann sum starts by partitioning your interval, the slicing that we do in integration. So our limits would be from 0 to 4. And our cross-sectional area, pi x. So our integral. Now, because they're circles, every one of your integrals will have a pi in it, which is a constant. So Typically, I would just take the pi outside. Using the power rule, antiderivative of x, x squared over 2, 0 to 4. 4 into there would be 16 over 2, or 8. 0 into there would be 0. And so we get 8 pi. Now, as I said before, with area, 
if we have some sort of units, I want you to label your area with units. Same thing goes with volume. If there were units associated with the x and y axis, I would want those units here, but you could leave it off and there aren't any units given, but this is a volume, so if you did want to put something, you could put units cubed to remind you that this is actually a volume. All right, next time we'll look at revolving a region where the curve does not create a region completely up against the axis of revolution so that we do have a hole in the middle of our volume. It's still going to involve circles, but we have to make a slight adjustment to what this cross-sectional area is.